Hello and welcome back and today I want to revisit a subject that I generally touch on on this channel about every 18 months or so. I want to talk about the WD colours of drives because although the, the kind of rhetoric stays the same from WD's kind of colour spectrum of internal hard drives, the actual range itself has changed a lot with every few years and it's always good to be updated through them. So much like my other videos, I am going to be talking about each of the main colours of the WD hard drive series, but tell you the things that have changed in recent years. So, let's get straight into it. Firstly, WD Blue. Now, WD Blue is the one that most users are going to be the most familiar with. It's kind of, it was their desktop series and still is, although the WD Blue brand has definitely expanded in ways that we didn't see before. Available into the mid-range capacities, I think uh, currently at 4 and 6 TB, the WD Red series is available in 2.5 inch and 3.5 inch form factors. It's also been extended into a range of SSDs, and I do recommend, and I'll probably plug it a few times in this video, that I have done a full overview of the WD Rainbow of SSDs as well. So although I'm not going to talk about the SSDs, I do have a video on that very, very subject that came out like a few weeks ago. But... The WD uh, Blue series of hard drives are designed to be used on their own, they're for standalone series environments, and they are all SATA in connection. The standard class hard drives are for desktop PCs, day-to-day -day utilization, you know, a PC for the corner, kind of low-level, um, not enterprise, low-level kind of business desktop use, a kind of workstation, bung it in, work, process some documents, you know, click a few links, and that's about it. The cash values are generally quite low uh, inside. Generally, it's you know you're looking at 64 meg, maybe 120, eight, uh, the highest there. And the capacities do utilize the standard kind of platter control there. They are not designed for RAID environments. They're certainly not designed for high impact utilization. I'm sure the read and some of the details with regards to the vibration factors and um, power consumption are already on screen there. But the WD Blue series if anything, I would say, has been ever so slightly scaled back. WD Blue was always the brand that everyone was aware of, but I think the fact that WD Blue now ha has hit a capacity limit overall, and the fact that there are bigger and better drives out there, and of course, this idea that the SSD um, range as a whole has come to a more affordable level, means that hard drives are nowhere near as utilized as they once were, and are generally more deserving of archive and bulk storage and single drives like that are generally not going to be utilized for bulk storage so the only time you're ever going to see a wd blue drive is normally working in parallel with a, an, an ssd running the os and although the, if you're going to be running low-end pcs you know standard dell pc builds you see them on ebay all the time or if you're just replacing an old um, legacy drive to something a little bit newer but you're still not going to be utilizing it quite heavily it's a family pc stuff like that or a general desktop pc environment for the office wd blue is very much the one to go for it arrives at a great price point and it definitely arrives at a great price per terabyte as well and although the performance will not knock your socks off it doesn't need to because although you can use it for your os you shouldn't really because i would definitely move over to ssds now for your general os and i'm pretty sure that's going to be a minimum recommendation on any future version of windows let alone having windows 10 in any recommended stable form so next we can talk about one uh, member of the WD Color family that's kind of largely disappeared, WD Green. WD Green was always kind of their energy efficient series of hard drives, which have largely disappeared. WD Green as a hard drive brand is gone for the most part. You can still find them knocking around. They come under the, a lot of the time, the label WD AV drives. They were used a lot of the time for surveillance utilization before surveillance media technology has really really got you know evolved into a much more different beast but wd greens as a hard drive range are largely gone they consume probably the least power of any hard drive range out there and although the wd green brand still exists in the form of ssds as a hard drive um, series it is largely gone and whatever information you see on screen is largely going to be legacy based 
arriving with much smaller cash than most drives and because their capacities never really got to evolve in line with modern technology you'll almost certainly never find them in higher than two maybe four terabyte drives but even then it's not really supported and generally when you do buy them they're going to arrive without a warranty the majority of drives that we talk about today will either have two or three years of warranty at the top end you'll start to see those five-year warranties but we'll get to that in just a bit next we can talk about WD Black, the business drive, the creative drive. The drive, if you're a professional and you take it seriously, you're still in a single drive environment, but you take your storage and what you're doing with your data seriously, WD Black is what you should be using instead of WD Blue. Arriving with a higher cache point, this is where we started to see the 128 and 256 megabyte cache arriving. It also arrived with much more industrial utilization of vibration sensors, and um, advanced format technology as well. Arriving in SATA form, WD Black, I believe, currently supports up to about six terabytes at the time of recording right now, at the very least, and on screen it should indicate that. And the WD Black label, like all the labels that we talk about today, has obviously been expanded into the field of solid state drives as well. With the WD Black NVMe drive, something to behold. I think it's the SN750 SSD, it's a high-end NVMe drive promising, you know, 3,000 megabytes per second performance in read, which is real, real breathtaking. But in terms of hard drive utilization, you are still looking at a drive that will put out well in excess of 230 to 240 megabytes per second performance in read. And with a great balancing point between read and write, this single utilization drive is definitely one for the business class creatives. Although it can be utilized in conjunction with an SSD, just like WD Blue, WD Black drives can work very well on their own in a standalone PC environment, in both, of course, PC and Mac environments too. You can use them in RAID because they're quite high end, but it's not recommended. And of course, like any RAID drive, it doesn't have the same variable read write that you're going to be utilizing in, a, in like a NAS environment that we'll talk about in just a moment. But a lot of users will take advantage of a WD Black hard drive in conjunction with an SSD to make sure their archive storage can keep up with that of the solid state storage that their OS may be utilizing. And WD Black series of drives are probably one of the most well known in creative circles. And it was kind of the first entry point for a lot of users who were buying hard drives that saw SSDs on the horizon, saw the under and saw and understood the performance values on offer, but could never really go for that as a viable option financially. Now, next we move on to the one that I talk about on this channel quite a lot. I want to talk about WD Red because WD Red for me was the first time that we saw Western Digital create something that was so diverse from the original hard drives that it, it necessitated the whole family system. It wasn't the first drive to arrive in the color spectrum of drives, but I think it was the first one to necessitate it. Now, WD Red is their NAS series of drives. What that means is it is designed for uh, um, random read-write actions in a way that traditional hard drives aren't. Let me explain. WD Red hard drives are used either in RAID environments, we have multiple drives all side by side, with these drives being read and written to quite sporadically. In a RAID environment, you might have one big file being written across multiple disks, as well as the parity, of course, constantly over and over again. They are slightly, I would say, more optimized towards read, but only partially. They do have a great read-write balance, because they have to. NAS devices are left on for 24-7, you know, days, weeks, and months on end. The result is this is a drive that needs to be active for very long periods of time. It has to be able to switch between idle and active very, very quickly and to do it as energy efficiently as possible. But, of course, it's not going to be as low powered, um, and by power I mean consumption, as a green, but the WD Red on balance and overall will utilize less power in all of these high-end scenarios. Now, in the early days of uh, NAS-based hard drive technology, a lot of people thought it was a fad. A lot of people were thinking, why on earth am I going to pay extra just for a colour of a drive? Surely the technology is the same. And it's just not. 
These days, drives have been tailored more towards the end use. I, one comparison I want to make quite a lot is about the cutlery in your drawer. You've got lots of spoons, lots of forks, lots of knives, but different knives, forks, and spoons are better for different tasks. And the same thing applies to these hard drives. WD Red drives are the perfect fit for NAS environments due to their increased caching, their better vibration sensors, um, better power on and off, and a rotation, uh, an RPM, that is far more monitored. Now, WD Red does come in two different formats. It's WD Red and Red Pro. The Pro series of drives takes everything that the WD Red series puts on the table and increases it. It has a higher RPM, a dedicated 7200, compared with um, what they call IntelliPower, but is ultimately 5400 RPM. It also arrives with a larger cache and enhanced vibration uh, RV sensors. Both of them arrive with dedicated NAS firmware in the firm of NASware 3.0 currently, but the a Pro Series drive is designed for larger arrays. Once you start introducing WD Reds into any NAS device, it increases vibration, it increases heat, and the more drives being accessed, the more activity and the more intelligence is required uh, by the NAS system at the very least for that drive data to be laid out. The result is that a Pro Series drive takes that same logic on a larger level. So you can install it in larger RAID arrays. Eight drives and above is recommended, and it even arrives with a five-year warranty. So the Pro Series drives are the ones that will give you enhanced performance compared with that of traditional WD Red, with the added bonus that it has a longer warranty and is more geared to more industrial utilization. So WD Red for me is probably the drive I talk about the most, but one that I talk about on and off on this channel, largely because of its comparative similarity to Red, is of course WD Purple. Now WD Purple is their surveillance series, and WD Red and Purple is where we started to see the huge capacities. Up until that point, um, WD Green, Black and Blue all arrived um, with capacities at 2, 4, and 6 terabyte. It was only when red and purple arrived that we saw capacities at um, 8, 10, 12, and now 14 terabytes. The reason being that these are scenarios where data is gathered very, very, very quickly and in huge quantities, and none more so than surveillance. Now, the WD Purple series for surveillance and NVR use is designed to, to have a higher write than read value. When you've got multiple cameras in any home or business environment, if you've got those on 24 seven, being monitored and recording data with the occasional alert, the result is a huge amount of data being written to drives all the time. Moreover, if your surveillance scenario involves recycling of data, so every X number of days, the old data is written over, you end up with an enormous amount of rewrite as well happening on this disk. So the result is you may have a drive that's never really powered down. On top of that, a drive that's constantly being written to and rewritten to. So WD Purple drives are designed for that. They've got that higher write value because a, a surveillance hard drive will generally spend the majority of its life, 90-10, being written to with the data only occasionally being accessed, and even then, partially. And when that data is being accessed, chances are the drive is still being written to. So you need to have a more specialized drive for that kind of media scenario. Now, WD Purple drives arrive in NVR form and a kind of AI-supported uh, uh, NVR form. And a lot of that is known as DVA. And these more enterprise-level uh, Purple drives do arrive with their own improved factors. I'm sure it's on screen right now. WD Purple drives are often kind of debated against WD Red drives because both of them are designed for 24-7 scenarios and both of them are designed for RAID arrays very, very well. So how do you choose between them? Nice and simple. If you are utilizing a NAS server and one of its functions is surveillance, but not all, go for the red. Because as good as those purple drives are for surveillance, they're not as good for pretty much everything else because of that higher percentage of write versus read. And if you're going to be accessing data all the time, that means you're going to be having a lot of read. However, if you're buying a NAS predominantly or exclusively for surveillance, then definitely go for the purple series of drives because you will see the benefit of that hardware architecture. Now, the final drive we want to talk about is really a flip of a coin. It is the WD Gold because it is a 
brand and part of the colour range from WD that comes and goes. It was around and then it went away and then it came back. Whether it was because of popular demand or ease of marketing and promotions, the WD Gold brand is available. And again, much like WD Red, much like WD Purple, WD Gold arrives in both hard drives and SSDs and also arrives with the highest capacity available. Now, WD Gold as a hard drive series is pretty much as good as it gets. Some of them have got read and writes of 260 to 270 megabytes per second read, and they have intense operations in mind. If you're looking for the highest IOPS, which is something we don't normally measure on hard drives, but possible in hard drives, you look at your WD Gold series. It, a lot of them have got the highest rate of cash. I think the majority of them arrive with 256 megabytes of cash, although some of them at the lower capacities don't have that. On top of that, these series of drives have all got pretty much dedicated 7200 RPM as a speed. That's how they achieve in conjunction with that cash, those high speeds. Um, they are available as SATA drives, and I do believe there is moves towards the SAS equivalent, but I don't know if that is uh, come to fruition. A lot of users who want that will be recommended to go for the Western Digital Ultrastar series instead. But with WD Gold, you are looking at a data center class drive. It takes the logic that we saw in the WD Red and Purple series of 24 seven um, heavy read write access and moves it into the data center where drives will be in blocks of 20 and 40 and 50 and 100 in enormous rack mount arrays. And in this scenario, you need a drive that can not only be read and written to frequently and not only work in a RAID environment of spanning enormous RAID arrays like RAID 50 and RAID 60 on huge scales, but on top of that, can do it and not suffer. You can't look at, you shouldn't have to look at a WD Gold drive and say those are good results in spite of or in lieu of. WD Gold drives are meant to be the pinnacle. So if you're looking for something for data center use or even traditional NAS use, but you want top end performance or you're working in an environment where um, results are matter the highest, but the environment isn't exactly the most laid back, WD Gold might be the one for you. They are a hyperscale drive. They are designed for enormous storage arrays where data capacities need to be at the top end and so just the performance. Now, of course, they have um, improved vibration and temperature sensors. They have dedicated firmware inside to make sure things are tip top. And I'm sure all of that's on screen there. But WD Gold is also the most expensive one on offer. Available in the highest capacities. It um, kind of competes a lot of the time with WD Red Pro in that they've got very similar values. But WD Gold arrives with a much higher MTBF as well as a higher data rights per day overall. So... What more can we end on on this video? We've talked about SSDs. Let's talk about some of the middling factors. First and foremost, I'm sure a lot of you watching this video are wondering about if I'm going to address um, SMR, or as they call it, drive managed SMR versus conventional magnetic recording. We've made a bunch of videos about it. I recommend you check that out. But hopefully on screen right now are the current range of drives from WD in their red and black series and I believe the blue as well, that all feature SMR. And although I'm not personally a huge fan of SMR, it's better that it's drive managed overall in these scenarios. I know there's a school of thought there versus the likes of um, host managed SMR, but again, there are arguments two and four. And it looks like more and more we're seeing um, drive managed SMR being the only way to combat this um, area of storage and the overall capacity currently available to us. So let's see how that plays out. But apart from that, when it comes to buying the right drive for you, the WD Colors spectrum is pretty much as good as it gets these days. It's very hard to compete with that. And as far as understanding the right drive for you, it's pretty straightforward. And I don't think you're going to get too confused with that. If you've got any questions about today's video, or maybe some drives that I didn't touch on, such as Velociraptor um, and some of those other higher class drives, and of course I recommend you check out my SSD video. But if I didn't, do click like, but go in the comments and let me know more about the drives that I haven't covered and how I could cover them next time. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.